Okay, this video is called Patterns of Disease. And the point of it is just to say that a lot of people think, oh, medicine is so complex. You know, how could anybody on their own ever make any sense of it? And the point of this video is that there's really a couple major categories of disease. And when you prevent one of them, you're pretty far along the way of preventing all of the diseases in that category. So, you know, if you open up a pathology textbook of medical diseases, there could be like 500 diseases. But <laughs> I can tell you, I look at, you know, dead and dying patients every day, all right? And they got the same stuff all the time. The main things that kill people in the United States is atherosclerosis, okay? And where does that come from? It comes from hypertension and diabetes and high-fat diet, a high-sodium diet, um, oils, animal foods. So... This plugs up arteries, and then when it plugs up arteries, they cause problems in those areas. For example, you know, heart disease, when people say that they mean coronary artery disease, that's just atherosclerosis in the arteries of the heart. Impotence, atherosclerosis in the arteries going to the Johnson. A stroke, cognitive slowing due to vascular, you know, vascular cognitive impairment, that's just atherosclerosis in the arteries of the brain. And the point I want to make is a lot of people think, well, I've got hypertension, but it's under control, it's under control. And the point I would say is that your body has a physiologic system for regulating blood pressure that's much better than anything you're going to achieve with a pill. Uh, maybe some people need the pills, you know, especially when it's chronic and their artery walls are, you know, scarred in, fibrosed, and calcified. But you also run into the problem of overtreating hypertension, and then you get the, I call them mouse equivalents based on the Jack Delatory theory of chronic cerebral hypoperfusion. Then you get your pressure too low and you're not getting enough blood to the brain. And the same high fat diet, high sodium, it ties in all this postprandial after eating lipotoxemia, lipid peroxidation, physical. So, but the point I want to say is when you avoid high fat foods, animal foods, and adding salt to your food, all this stuff goes away. I mean, if you've had it for decades and decades, you're going to have some chronic scarring in your arteries. But if you get it sooner, you'll still be able to improve things. What I'm trying to say is this is a very manageable thing. All right. Um, lack of dietary fiber. Then you run into the whole Dennis Burkett described abdominal pressure syndrome. You got to take care of your teeth. You get leaky gums. And by getting your act, an, enough dietary fiber, you avoid abdominal pressure syndrome. You avoid leaky gut. Okay. And you have good, take good care of your teeth. You avoid leaky gums. And these are the main predisposing things to autoimmune disease. So in just a few things, by eating a low-fat vegan diet, you've prevented all this atherosclerotic stuff, hypertensive stuff, diabetes stuff, type 2 diabetes. You prevented abdominal pressure syndrome. You've gone a million miles towards preventing any uh, autoimmune disease. Watch out for estrogen, uh, estrogenic chemicals. They're all over the place. You could put these into toxicology, but they're so ubiquitous, and there's so many ways you can be exposed to them. Um, but it's pretty easy to learn about them. I've given a whole bunch of lectures on estrogenic chemicals, and that pushes you towards breast cancer, prostate cancer, you know, fibrocystic breast disease, fibroid tumors of the uterus, and all that stuff. You can potentially end up with a hysterectomy, become demented at a premature age because of hysterectomy. I got lectures on that. Infections. Well, optimize your immune system and, you know, be careful about your promiscuity and you dramatically lower your risk of infections. All right. Cancer. If you want to help prevent cancer, the same dietary lifestyle approach goes dramatically towards doing that. Plus, you know, learn about the metabolic theory of cancer. You, you can't make sense about cancer until you study the metabolic theory. Once you study the metabolic theory, lots of things become obvious that are helpful to you for preventing, reducing uh, the risk of cancer and improving prognoses. Okay, mental health disorders. You know, some of them are certainly due to lifestyle events and um, excess stress and all that. But of course, there's a tremendous component due to the metabolic problems. And I've, I've talked about that. I, I went into that in more detail with my review of Chris Palmer's book. He's a psychiatrist from Harvard who, who calls it the brain energy theory, the mitochondrial theory of uh, uh, mental health disorder. Certainly, when you have poor mitochondrial function, you're more vulnerable to becoming tipped over the edge by some type of stress or event in your life. Um, I, have, I made a whole, whole bunch of videos also on food and mood and uh, how food affects mood. Okay, uh, toxicology diseases. This is something I almost knows about. By the way, doctors in the United States, they are not trained in diet and they're not trained in toxicology. And that's about 75% of disease, okay? And then when you say, well, what disease is not included in that? Well, trauma, okay, so they don't, the, trauma's a separate subject. Yeah, it certainly is. But if you include trauma and diet and toxicology, that's at least 80% of disease or more, okay? So it's pretty important to know about it. Um, there's tons of problems. There's 
pollution in the water, pollution in the air, pollution in the food. <laughs> There's psychological pollution in the public schools. Um, you got to watch out for a lot of these supplements too. Things like protein supplements. Uh, sometimes those things are made in China and they got you know heavy metals in them. Take a look at Consumer Reports. There's a couple different articles on it. You know, I forget like 2012 and some other uh, ones. Um, all right, slow poisons. We kind of talked about these. These are topics for another day. But what I'm basically saying is, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine major categories of disease. And each one of them, there's tremendously good things you can do to minimize and prevent all the stuff. So that gives you reason to be hopeful. Just understand a couple basic concepts. I've lectured about all this stuff. And you can dramatically improve your health. Instead of being like the typical American, you know, fat, cognitively slow, by their mid fifties and then, you know, kind of sad and pathetic. They're, you just do this, it's easy, you can do it on your own and you can dramatically increase your chances of aging well. Okay, well, hope that helps.